What's happening, everyone? Is your body ready? My body's ready. Green candles, red candles, yellow candles, upside down backflips. Things are good. Things are good in Hexco. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Today, Axis Live and Crispy Man are back. And we're going to get into a lot of TA, a lot of charts. Deep dive into Hex. You know the coin? that mints millionaires, you know, the coin that has helped people pay off their mortgages, their parents' mortgages, um, has helped uh, lots of people be financially free and a lot of whales created that uh, took their, maybe took a lot of their winnings and went into pulse chain and pulse X and stuff too, just to, just to keep winning that coin, that token, that delayed gratification, that compound interest machine. Yeah, that's what we're talking about today. We're bringing it back. We're, we're bringing Hexy back. Yeah, I'm going to make that song one day, I think. I think I'm going to do it. Either me and Westcott or, uh, or maybe just me. We'll see. Anyways, uh, I'll get the chat in just a minute. But let me bring them in before we get too far. But we got a lot to talk about. Welcome back to the show. Axis Live and Crispy Man. How's it going, gents? What's going on? How's everyone doing? Doing good. Doing good, man. What is uh, what is your current pulse of the ecosystem? Like both of you, how do, how do you feel? Red candles, green candles, but what are you thinking at this moment that is just how you feeling right now man both of you well i'm ready to suspend disbelief right uh disbelief is that concept and particularly when you're dealing with crypto where you're like now nah, this is there's no way this stuff can go up when it's just that that disbelief there's just so much going on and so i'm seeing so many indications so many positives right now that i have to suspend disbelief because otherwise i'll just be wallowing around going it's never going to go up but it but it is going up and it has been going up and the trends are showing that so it's time to suspend some disbelief feels bullish to me um <laughs> i got a bull i got a bull uh, bias for sure i don't think that's uh a shocker to anyone but um yeah, like the retracement that we've seen in the Pulse Chain ecosystem has been very mild. Um, just tested the sack rate one time and bounced pretty hard off that level. And I think, you know, Pulse is just setting up for um, a nice little sidestep move, uh, some, some accumulation, some uh, a second chance for people to buy any kind of a short-term pullback. And um, I think it's interesting how during this period of like uh, relaxation and re time to breathe before the next leg up, uh, it looks like we're getting some hidden signals from the hex charts that they want to actually make the move first. So it's uh, very appropriate that we're here today talking about hex because uh, the price action is printing the historic Adam and Eve bottoming pattern, which is usually a a bullish reversal pattern in uh, candlestick charting. So definitely uh, feeling bullish, man. I, I, uh, I, I think Crispy's right. I think we're at that disbelief phase where um, you could run a fractal on like the price action right now on Pulse, for example, looks very similar to it did at the bottom, but just kind of magnified and at a higher uh, base price level. And you can run a fractal on that and I think that fractal would end up being too bearish because the circumstances have completely changed. And so now you, that market is actively a purchasing as many coins or as many units as possible at the best price. And we're seeing a lot of that in the charts and in the, uh, in the chain analysis. Well, all the stuff that's happened in the last few weeks to just the bridge, just exploding uh, the volume um, and we still don't have a lot of the products launched in the ecosystem yet, but um, it just, it's just one, it just feels so much different than it did even after, even around January, you know, January 6th, a lot of the stuff kicked off. God wills back on Twitter, all that stuff that if anyone's been following. But yeah, Crispy, how do, how, how do you see looking a month ago, you know, even the, the sentiment, even what you've seen happening, like <laughs> how, how different does it feel? Is it the, the FOMO is strong in this one? <laughs> That's what I got to tell you. I'm feeling the FOMO pretty good. I'm kicking myself in the ass, right? I mean, how, how, uh, and then I remember, wait a minute, I'm already allocated. So, how many things now have I seen that I'm like, 
damn, I missed that 10X. I missed that 20X. And I don't even get into this stuff, right? But I'm looking at it and I'm going, like, what's going on with this stuff? It's all going up. Um, and, and I get, I, you know, not everything's gone up, right? But uh, yeah, I'm super bullish at this point with, with how things are feeling. And I'm reminded daily to be colorblind, you know, mm -hmm. meaning, meaning, you know, I don't know how I can look at my, uh, I, I don't know how I can look at the charts and everything's red, but my value and pulse went up. Right. So there, there are definitely, uh, there's definitely some cognitive problems that maybe others are experiencing, but I'm certainly experiencing, uh, you know, recollecting exactly what's happening. Right. Cause I look at the, I look at the charts and I see one thing, I look at the colors, I'm feeling something else. And then I look at the sentiment, uh, but to sum it all up, you know, RH Max, I, I, yeah, I think things are much more bullish, right. Than they were just a month ago. Right. And as somebody pointed out, T-share rate on both chains, all-time high, baby. Another all-time high, like a like a machine. You still doing that hex thing? You still that hex coin? That thing? <laughs> I love when people talk about it. But you always know, have the one the articles and stuff. They always write them like yeah, the hex hex token or hex coin, or they always have to put some sort of thing around it that just makes them makes us uh, clearly see that they uh, they haven't done the research. Uh, if mm -hmm. you will. Anyways, you guys, uh, when we throw up the chart axis. Yeah, pull this pull this thing up. Um, Frank go. asked asked to see the chart, so I know it's a hex centered stream, but Paul, but what hex does is so dependent on pulse. I thought it was only appropriate to maybe start there. Of course. Um, yeah, you're just not seeing like the follow through on the sell side as you did here. Um, in in this kind of action, so it's like just from the shape of the of the price action it uh it's flatter this angle is not as sh is is sharper than this angle it's pretty simple right so the it's it's falling down at a lower rate at a slower rate and uh you know if it breaks out of this channel it's going to start in, it's going to have take another leg higher uh maybe just a marginally higher looks like the beginning of an it, it looks like you're in the middle of an abc correction actually but it's just the follow through has to come in. So basically right now someone has to nuke a bag and make a bearish engulfing candle here to get any more downside. Um, I'm looking for Sacrate to be a tremendous support for the ecosystem uh, if it even gets there. So Paul, in terms of pulse, like just on the some simple lagging indicators here, the MACD is crossing, um, which is significant. Usually these crosses have resulted in bigger moves and this is making a higher low. So you have low number one, low number two. Last time it crossed, you had this big move up in momentum. We're getting that cross now again. If you go back in time, there were periods where they did, they led to these crosses led to lackluster results, relatively speaking, compared to where we're at here. But, uh, it, it was still it was still price positive though. In this case, it was forty percent gain over fifteen days back here. But uh, there's a lot more volatility in the uh, price action from this from like aftershock. I would call it from this big move here. And so that aftershock is like the market has to restabilize, and it looks pretty bullish here. Like it's creating some sort of a rising structure to me anyway. Um, so just looking at the. I don't know if you guys had any commentary on that quick or uh, going to move on to the hex stuff. Well, it just feels like, too, the, the sentiments. Like, we get a couple of days of green candle, or sorry, red candles, and everyone's like, all right, party's over. It's being sad again. That's like, uh, good, a great point, Max. I think that's kind of the disbelief phase talking. You know what I mean? I think it just, you know, because it, it, trying to look for downside targets after this happened was hard. Right. So we saw that happen. It's like, well, what's the downside? Like, how low can it go back down? And, uh, well, we got our answer here with SAC rate, but that's a fun, more of a fundamental reason, right? Fundamentally, market makers want to keep that and hold that structure. So that made sense for a bounce there, not even from a tech. I mean, even technically, I guess this is a technical marvel. Look at how that perfectly held this previous resistance level. There was just a, a small consolidation pattern and then it ripped up out of it out of there so it makes sense that this is the new range and you know if it keeps stair stepping higher like this you if you clear like that like let's say three zeros one four level uh it's clear skies for another for another stair step um you know you could be just shy of the uh 
three zeros and an 18 or three three zeros and a two even with some overperformance. So yeah, it's it's brewing for something amazing. Um, sentiment wise, like I said, you know, you're that's sentiment has gotten a lot better. I think the I don't think any. I know that it feels like when you start to see like the sell off here that oh I got to be prepared for seventy five percent, but I don't think this is that instance. I don't think the pulse chain chart's going to give you that like a sixty to seventy percent drop from here. Uh, just a, probably a giant W pattern. And, and why is that too? What makes you gives you confidence? Is it just the liquidity? I mean, you can just watch. I mean, you can just watch bridge flows for that probably, and uh, just there's different behaviors you want to watch for so you know every time like two hundred three hundred thousand dollars leaves the bridge and goes back to ethereum it seems like another hundred to two hundred thousand dollars comes in right behind it within a day or less hours in a lot of cases so it's sta like the bridge is stabilizing so that's your money flow in and out of the ecosystem and as long as money stays in this side um it's uh it's it can't it basically creates a situation where there's a loop of value that can stay in which can inflate prices even more so that's one thing to look for um it's it's been stable around this level for a while it's been fluctuating between 120 and 130 um that is in millions so 120 to 130 million dollars of uh bridged in liquidity but the die is that it's it's like on a it's on a positive slope here so we're actually seeing organic organically that there's more dye being brought over too as well so it's all kind of setting up quite nicely that way more usdl than ever before as well that means that there's on-chain stable coins backed by pulse which is meaning more supply locked up uh, the gold pulse guys actually made this really cool locked page so it shows you all the locked value on the on the chain and uh, there's currently 336 million dollars of locked value and from that we can derive uh stablecoin liquidity from for example the 130 million dollars that's in liquid loans so that that 130 million dollars of pulse is is backing the value of the 31 million dollars of usdl that's so almost that give you a ratio of like five to one or so, or so. three six nine twelve it's it's about four a little over four to one um what, what is a healthy ratio. what does uh, a healthy scenario look like versus a unhealthy on that you know what? That's a good question. I would be interested to know what health looks like on DAI, on uh, on Ethereum. Um, I'm not going to go into that right now, but that would be something to look at. Is like, look at like a, a a chart of the history of the amount of TVL locked on Ethereum to back the value of all of the stable coins, of which there's hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars of uh, well, billions of dollars of DAI in this case. So, yeah, that's that's all bullish uh, conditions for less value leaving and more value incoming. I mean, it. it what do you think? What do you think, uh, Max? And what do you think, Crispy? I'm just looking at the validators and the liquid loans going head to head, and that's. Uh, I think it's amazing. I think you know we've had what uh, eight, ten, ten months or so, nine or ten months for the validators to kick off, and yeah, get two hundred million. Uh, pulse locked and then we see liquid loans launched a few weeks ago and uh we got uh yeah it's 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 coming up on the on validators too and who, I, I don't know do you guys think it'll it'll look uh liquid loans i know if we if we do power city and stuff eventually if we add up the numbers of minted staples uh from pulse and pulse x it will probably you know overtake validators at some point but liquid loans by itself you think in the next few months uh, it'll be it'll be more than validators, or are we going to kick up validators uh, st starting here now since green yeah, candles? I'm too? not sure. Uh, I want to know, Crispy, what you think about this, but let me get a, this edge in first, which was that I think the way to think about this type of a question is like, what is the protocol paying out in APY? And this is going to be like one of the focuses of of my talk, and uh, Crispy's helping me with it as well, of course. But my talk in Vegas at the meetup in uh, March, we're going to be talking about passive income streams on Pulse Chain and all the different options. And really, all these valuations boil down to what's my overhead costs and what's my APR. Um, that's your baseline. And then you have to factor in probably some further qual quantitative analysis of price performance as a third leg of um, 
uh, a third variable that might change your payout. Um, yeah, it's, it's super fun to get into the weeds on that stuff, but fundamentally liquid loans is paying a hundred percent APR for money locked in the stability pool and 50% APR for money locked in the loan staking pool. And I don't know how it's calculating that 50% in the, the loan staking pool, because I've noticed that the payouts in there aren't good during stable periods. So actually the low loan stakers, they make more money in a volatile period where people's vaults are getting hit with redemptions and they're adding and removing vaults or in just very trending markets. Whereas like the stability pool seemed to have been paying out a pretty steady amount of loan token. So what that kind of has set up for a situation is a form of hyperinflation on loan token um, in the midterm which means that that becomes like a dump token for now, but it does have a cap supply of 5.5 trillion. So once that gets that supply gets distributed out and more of the total fixed cap supply gets out there in the wild and is distributed more proportionally to the user base, I expect that to be a period where loan token can go on a huge run up because it'll start to get more scarce. Um, so you're competing for your APR is competing against the drop in everyone rushing to sell newly inflated loan supply um, on that 100% APR. Yeah. Uh, I was just thinking too, when I think about validators for good versus LL, it's when I, when I look at validators, I consider it even, you know, cause when you're doing the, when you're doing loans with liquid loans, for example, you know, you're minting it or you're minting the stables at a certain collateral rate ratio. So you're going to get, you know, a certain percentage of that, whether it's way different if you do 110% versus 200% and so on. So you're getting that, you're able to, you know, stake in the stability pool or go chase, you know, other, other yield opportunities as well versus validators where you're, you're locking it and it's harder. It's not hard to unlock, but it's, you're much less likely to just because the hoops you have to get. first, it's like the, um, uh, like sunk cost fallacy is sort of like that, where you spend all the work. If you set one up yourself, at least you spend all the work and effort to learn all the stuff, get it going. You feel good. You're supporting the network and stuff too. Even though it's a low APR, it's, it's probably accurately under 10% uh, at this point with the uh, 50, 52 K or something we have right now. But the risk is super low because even if you're offline for a while, you know, the pulse you lose is you can make up in a few days type of thing. Mm, so the so, slashing, the slashing, uh, isn't as bad. It doesn't hurt the wallet as bad as what you're saying. As no, if you're offline for, because I've, I've, I've had to switch providers or otherwise you're offline for two or three days. Yeah, you lose maybe a few thousand pulse or something, but oh, okay, it's, so it's peanuts. not a big deal. It's interesting. And so then I was coming around to the idea that the uh, li the liquid loan, I'm sorry, the uh, validating pays like around 9% right now. So the actual r APR is a lot lower, but it's paying in that precious pulse native asset which is the difference here whereas like the other one you have to kind of convert newly minted loan supply into pulse to get it yeah and uh yeah go ahead and yeah i just hope uh, on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm on mute talking but let me throw this to you yeah dude hey listen i keep saying this and it's not a saying i made up but quantity is a quality of all its own and um during the same period of time sure sure pulse went down at first right pulse also went up Right. So what are we three X, five X from, from the low? What's the total X's, right? We're up, I think uh, three and a half. Let me double check though. All right. So, um, if you, even if you take, um, even if you take one, one validator, 32 million, right. Just to give you an idea of how I'm thinking about 32 million and you just say, Hey, you're only going to make 10% a year. Right. Um, and so, um, 10% a year, is going to give us what times uh, it's going to be uh 3.2 million right now sure right now everybody goes well hey, it's not that much I add up the number you know and i say okay well three zeros one two um you know that's roughly the price right and so that's only 384 dollars a year that's not very much right well guys 100x that right and and what's happening is like everything else is uh barrier to entry um, you know, one single validator at a penny could be paying, you know, twenty five, thirty thousand dollars a year just for just for one single validator. 
And so, um, so it certainly uh, it might make sense for people later to come in and do more, more validating. It makes even more sense to get started early, as always. Um, but the people who are in, and this is what I'm hearing from the whales and seeing what the whales are doing, they aren't they aren't walking away, man. So uh, I mean, I just see them doubling down more and more and more. They are going to be the owners of uh, of the majority of that that uh, pulse that comes out by validating. I don't think people talk about it enough. I've tried to shout as loud as I can too. It's like it, if we 10 X in price from here in pulse, you, that prices out the majority of people in the ecosystem from becoming a validator. It, it's yeah, just, dude. it's just math. And, and then all the, you know, Oh, you know, losing money doing it right now. If you're doing the cloud, for example, you're paying way more monthly costs than you're getting return, all that stuff. If you're doing it at home, I'm not even sure what the break even is, how many validators you need to have uh, per server to do that. But essentially, you can. You, I, I assume everyone's losing money at this point because it's investment, right? Because pulse price is, is not 10 x already. If a 10 x is much harder to become a validator, uh, unattainable for most people, and it's going to actually start being profitable. So what does that do to the ecosystem? It sounds pretty healthy in one regard, but also it's like a good problem to have. You know, if it goes, you know, 4K to be a validator today, what if it's 40K? What if it's a 400K? Like at what point? do is it just unavailable and we have to do some sort of hopefully trusted product to those pulled staking or protocol change and uh to make it more affordable it's super fast yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. So, well you know and what's what's happened too you think about this access might talk about another project that he interviewed the other day but there's some pr protocols are coming along that maybe will allow the common person to go into a pool and and stake um but even outside of that and i know you and i have talked about it before we both done streams on the whole um validation thing the break even uh man it just seems like a no-brainer to get validating and get something running and and it doesn't have to be your whole bag you know but if you're if you're interested in pulse and you want to be in that ecosystem and you're looking for passive income get it set up earlier than later um because it gives you that exposure to that now alternative is hey listen if you're not that you know have that taste uh go, go stick access to i think because that's a lot easier to do in a lot, in a lot different way, you know? Yeah. Agree. Get, get anything else on that access? Or do you want to move um, to hex.com? I, I think that the liquid staking protocols that are coming are going to even amplify the amount of staked pulse even more. So I think it's not going to be a thing of less. I think there's going to be more people locking up pulse to get yield. Um, and it's going to only get easier and cheaper to do so. Um, so that's all price positive to me, all, uh, either matter which protocol you're choosing. That's a ton of look, of value that's just locked up and ready for a 10x before like people even start touching into that principal amount. I am bullish on that lock page on GoPulse. I'm bullish on that expanding. There's only they only list maybe five or ten products right now. Right, but. Just imagine, yeah, the different state pool products and stuff coming on. Just it would just... be neat to have a side by side of like the hex locked statistics as well, like based on league and for length, like how many T share years they have, and yeah, I mean, no, no, nobody. We all have the goals. The, the data guys like Crispy we all have. We all have the goals of making every tool, but like if you literally really tried, you could never make every single tool. <laughs> but yeah, mm -hmm. man, there's so many bullish metrics going on right now. Um, even and in the hex system too, so they all they all kind of feed each other. Beautiful, beautiful, gentlemen. Let's talk about the greatest product on earth. Is that hex? I'm, I, I think that's hex. I mean, are I'm you confused, sir? You know which stream you're at. It's called the hex explosion. Let's, let's yeah. So what? Are there any explosions? So why? Why do we? Why do I? Why are we talking about an explosion um, on hex like right now? I mean, most people probably think this thing's done. On Ethereum, oh, man. not me, not me, baby. I'm, I, you know, somebody asked me the other day, said, "What do I think my low end is?" Now I, I'm conservative. I realize everything can go to zero, near zero, blah blah blah. Um, but I said, you know, honestly, I'm looking at models between two and sixty-six dollars combined hex. You know, now you assign a percentage of which one's more likely to happen. I don't know, but all of that is possible. Yeah. How how are you? Uh, what 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 kind of uh, data are you using that comes up with something like that? Like on the low end, let's say, like two to five bucks. What? Uh, it's 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 doing some pretty um, 
you know, low level type of numbers based on previous cycles and where we think things are today. And, you know, but it's, but it's super conservative, like half of what might have happened and, and that this isn't like a new thing. It's more like acting more like a L2, well, not L2, but a, but a second cycle type of thing, you know, that type of stuff. But um, the more, the more adventurous estimates are looking at, you know, what did Bitcoin do its first cycle versus Ethereum and trying to come up with some sort of average and stuff. It's not super mathematical, you know, because I'm putting a bunch of numbers into a spreadsheet. But th those are just some of the models that I'm saying. But I'll, I know you've got some some that are based on uh, math. Oh, uh, I mean, I got more well, fractals at least, right? Yeah, I mean, I got the same stuff you got, man. I, th I think I look at the. Uh... Some of my favorite stuff I've been looking at right now is uh, the ratios because it's kind of setting up for a move. Um, but in terms of like price predictions going out farther, uh, just based on if if Hex plays out like Bitcoin did or like Ethereum did, I mean we're looking at those kinds of price targets. Eighty cents is like the the very beginning of the bull run, like when it when stuff goes parabolic. Um, like the whole journey back to 50 cent combined is like just going to, it could happen pretty quick, quicker than people think it could. And that sets up for uh, the real move that goes to those really higher targets later on in the cycle. Um, yeah, the Golden Cross is on EHEX on the Weath pair. I was watching it kind of form here in the last few days. This here is like just 111 day moving average on the, on the, on the price chart something that crispy uses and then it, it was kind of interesting how the price just kind of consolidated bullishly underneath of it as consolidation below resistance line and that 111 and then there was like that fake out and then rip and now we're testing it to see if it's going to hold so i could actually see this just the reverse of what happened before happening and where it just kind of chops and grinds and it's like the last bit of accumulation before the markup and I think the markup on EHEX might actually c coincide with the markup on everything else in this case. Um, it doesn't seem like people are too eager to make it move on its own. But uh, that you can't rule that out either because that actually is what happened here where EHEX led the entire move off the bottom. So I was, that was pretty cool. Um, I still think it's the most uh, undervalued and cheapest RH coin out of all of them. Here it is against... Uh, Here's E hex measured against pulse. It's kind of been trapped in this range. It's at the bottom of the range. And if you zoom in here on like a, let's go to like a four hour and see what we can find. <clears throat> so it's the beginning of what I think looks like an Adam and Eve bottom. It's not as clean on here as it is on the P hex chart, but what an Adam and Eve bottom is, is a V bottom and a, and a snapback rally, and then a, a slow fade away in like a rounded bottom, something like this. Looks like a boot shape. Hold on a second. Got to tell this guy I'm on a live stream. Is that the uh, price god calling? That might be a price a price um, <laughs> person. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, this is kind of what I'm seeing here in the hex chart is this Adam and Eve. Now, if I look at the uh, P hex, it, it'll be like really, really clear. I think the hourly showed it pretty darn good. Yeah, see how P hex is already starting to recover a lot faster than E hex here against the ratio. Yeah. Um, so P hex looks to be the beginner here or the starter and it got above resistance. So like this is the beginning of a bigger move. And this kind of action here on the hourly where it's like a wave up and a retracement, a new high and a higher low, new high, probably form another higher low and test this grind line as support. Um, that same kind of action we actually were getting in calm, but calm is a much lighter asset. This is calm here. Um, from this low to the high here, we got that 221% move. But inside of here, you can see the same kind of methodical um, we call it like a uh, three rising valleys, valley number one, valley number two, valley number three. And then usually that marks the end and there's like a distribution phase up top and a retracement. And then it kicks up for another leg off the off that low. Um, so calm is respecting the same kind of action as uh, as PHEX is currently in further along in that cup portion of the of the move. 
Um, any comments on the Adam and Eve? I'm going to pull up what an Adam yeah. and Eve is while you're talking about it. Yeah, I, I would just say this is we, you know, we were, we could see this happening over the last couple of weeks. I know you spoke to your guys about it. We've been looking at it. Um, but one of the one of the things to, to remind people of is go look at these things also in the pulse value, not just dollar value. And uh, because that really tells a tale. You know, we were looking at text, for instance, going up in price and being kind of volatile, you know, bouncing around. But its pulse price was just going down. Yeah. You know, and now now it's reversing. And so that would have been that was really a good opportunity to get more more e hex, more more hex. Yeah, you zoom out here on like a daily again and you can see how depressed um P hex got versus pulse here. Um and of course the pulse X and ink charts look even worse in the ratio because of how much they overperformed. So it's kind of the market signaling to you that the hexes are the cheapest thing right now and uh but yet, if you go to a dollar chart, they're holding all right. Like, it's not down a ton. It's down 27% yep. against the dollar. So it's relatively I look at this chart. pretty darn good. Yeah. I know I'm interrupting you. Sorry. I, I look at that chart. I'm like, I'm not going to go buy. It just, it's up in price. I want to wait for it to come down. But then I remember I'm not bringing new money in. I have a, I have a bag of pulse. Right, it's actually cheaper than it was. It was a month ago. You know. Ex explain that, Crispy. That that's an actually important point too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because I look at the price, well, so, you know, everybody can make their own decisions about price when they look at it, but it looks to me like, eh, there's been some volatility. It was, it was low USD not too long ago and I could have gotten some then. And so then I'm like, no, I'm not going to buy any now. Right. I don't want to get any more. But when he switches over to the pulse, you can see that I already had that pulse. I'm not bringing new capital in. I have it sitting in my wallet. And if I, it's, it's only gotten cheaper, you know, over, over, since all the way from November. Right. Yeah, so it's thirty percent cheaper since December first in in pulse value, but then now watch me flip it back over since December first. Here's the sixth, close enough. But from the lows, it's up hundred and fifty percent against the dollar. But just since December first, so we can be exact about it from the low. Mm. It's up sixty two percent against the dollar, down thirty percent against pulse. So this is one of those ratio trade arbitrage opportunities that we had. And we'll have lots of these this cycle. So, you know, practice your understanding of ratios on these coins and and understand that the pulse pair is all that matters. Your coin's performance against pulse. Like that's where the pure signal is. And then the dollar chart is more useful for psychological levels that you might see the market take action at because that's where the market is looking but we want you guys to be ahead of the market. You RH crew, RH Max crew, you guys deserve to be all over the signal coming from the pulse pair. Do the max. Dude, that that's the I was thinking about that today too, just about crypto in general, or maybe DeFi, where it's like everything is just this this, you know, the money comes in, there's a distribution, and the people that play the game the best take it. And it's it's like it's like anything that's not a scam has that kind of where you have people they bridge you know you have real money in asset has zero value whatever token launches or what you know whatever in the liquidity pools or and and so on but and then it gets distributed to the people who you know are either buying the lows and selling the highs or it, it's just this pool of money that gets distributed and if you're playing it the right way then you reap the rewards you know with the riches or you leave it empty-handed it's this fundamental principle of like where does the money come from where does crypto come from and looking at that way with it, how would you that kind of I mean, and if you guys agree with that kind of thinking too, where does that fit in with hex? Like, how does hex these days? It's not a new coin anymore, but where where does the money where does it tend to flow? Where does it tend to flow? Like today into the market, where's it going? Yeah, just so, just people putting fresh money in, or people getting stakes in. Ding. I know it's kind of a big question, but I'm just curious to explore that. And whatever angle you guys think is interesting. Uh, you know, liquidity, there's, there's, a, there's, there's not a lot of liquidity out there. We're not seeing miners capitulate. Uh, effective inflation's up a tiny bit. So maybe some's coming out and not being restaked. New people, um, certainly on the pulse chain, they're coming in and they're, they're getting hex. So the amount of hex being held liquid is going up. Um, so yeah, I, I think we're, going up in, in what's getting locked slightly 
and also in what's being held. So that's where it's going at the moment. Now, there is a narrative out there that I don't like from a lot of people that, you know, hex mining isn't worth it. But of course, I totally disagree with that because I think with a really good ladder, it's a great uh, passive income stream to the extent crypto is passive income, right? But, um, you know, there are a lot of people that are, everybody's everybody's trying to go player versus player. we got a thousand of them playing Squid Game. You know, maybe it's 10,000 of us. All of us are going to be looking with our finger on the button trying to sell the top, right? And so I don't want to play that game. I want to be in the other game myself, which is I just have miners that come out and provide uh, provide yield. Anyways, that's, the, that's my two cents about where it's going. I'm look, just looking through. Oh, go ahead. All right, Max. No, no, I was going to say, Max, if you had a, because I know both of you have a very interesting perspective. I mean, Chris, be especially on the analytics side, and then you on the chart side, and just the just the overall vision of the ecosystem and the flow flow of capital around uh, around hex and the derivatives as well. Yeah. Any any no specific question, just anywhere yeah, you want so to explore. I, one thing that's interesting that's happening right now is you can see by the staker adoption chart is that a lot of the activity is happening on the pulse chain and not so much activity in terms of staking behavior or total stakes, I should say, is happening on uh, the ETH chain, but that's creating a div divergence in the share rate. Um, and I'm, I know Crispy would love to talk about that and what that might implications might be if it, if the trend stays the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, as we, we move off this and you, you look at the staker adoption, you notice how it went up and down. A lot of people were a little panicked, got, got afraid, like, oh, no, people coming back down. You know what's going on in the pulse chain is tons of short staking. For with lots and lots of hex, and um, so it can actually make some bumps in the road uh, in numbers of wallets and stuff. And there's people doing some different things. There's a lot of there's a lot of monkey business, right? Not negative monkey business, just stuff people doing stuff, you know, using using uh, contracts to do staking and you know all sorts of stuff. But uh, but generally, right, you see the trends up and to the right, you know, for um, for the for the at least the addresses that are out there. Um, when you see the divergence between the two, um, yeah, this you know this this looks like it's like some huge wide divergence, you know, a few thousand wallets and whatnot. But in terms of uh, uh, what it means to the hex uh, on both chains, doesn't mean a whole lot. In that you know the share rates are still pretty close together, uh, counts are pretty close together. But as Axis said, we're beginning to see a difference when we look at APYs between the two. Um, you can markedly see now on uh, X Daily stats. Anybody can go there and look. Like it's like the average percentage APY is like two percent higher usually, one one two percent higher on Ethereum now. And so that is beginning to work its way into how things operate in Hex. And what's happening is it's beginning to uh, deviate, right? And so these most recent change we had this week, the, the one of the top ten changes uh, to share rate. It was significantly different between uh, between the two by 30%. You know, in other words, the Ethereum share rate went up 30% more than the Pulse Chain percent. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's always it's always so fascinating to me. And I know people beat up uh, on the OA. I mean, it just answered a message today where people complain about the OA and what what the origin address did. But it, the system's so stabilized that we can we can all play all our all the games we want. And we can change which direction the ship's going, but it's really slow. It's like so slow, so slow that if you don't have patience, people get get right out and they just transfer their value to the remaining people. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and this average stake length is longer on ETH. It's kind of setting up for an interesting thing, uh, definitely. It seems like a lot of the uh, activity and short-term sell pressure might actually come from Hex on ETH, on, uh, I'm sorry, Hex on Pulse. Wouldn't mm -hmm. You know, because like a lot of the people that were more short term minded actually just flipped that chain or like uh, people that have no faith in Ethereum, they flipped to the other chain and they everyone that who's who's active like that, like really active, uh, wants to sell the top of the cycle. So you're definitely that's where all that extra activity, it's it's short to midterm. Um, all the long term activity is happening on the uh, east side. People that aren't so shook up about you know, something like gas fees. It's still the same thing. I know we've talked. Well, they're both, on that. 
Well, there's definitely long term on both going on, but um, but yeah, I mean, certainly the smaller guys. Are, I'm, I'm not going to do a five thousand hex stake on Ethereum right now. I'm not going to do that, right? It doesn't make any sense. This is the potential for the gas, but we are seeing, um, you know, Quattro's Inco stakes out there on both chains. In fact, on the Ethereum chain, we've got more T shares out in two thir- 2038, 37, 38, and thirty nine than we do on the Pulse chain side. Um, so it seems like a lot of the short money looking for quick gains are focusing more on pulse chain kind of makes sense. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's where they're moving. And, um, it's, so it's breaking down the APY a little bit, which is how the system's meant to operate. So it's not negative, you know, more adoption looks like that, right? So more adoption doing shorter stakes. And so on the, um, on the pulse chain side, the way you beat it is, uh, by going out longer than them. If you, if you're going to play that game. And, and you know, see so out longer than they are if you're doing mining and you're on that chain. Are you saying longing pay longer? I was gonna say longing pays better. Oh, longer so pays, better. pays better. <laughs> longer does pay better, baby. Yeah. Got a quick question from Super Snake. Real question is: Should this pubs be DCAing into EHEX or Pulse X? Um. So I got a I got a thought for that. So this is the EHEX Pulse X ratio chart. So just think about it like this: If uh, this is the line we're looking at. This, uh, let's do close. Let's do it in white so you can see it. Or yellow. There we go. Nice and bright. See, that yellow line is the price chart of uh, how much hex I can get for a Pulse X. So you take it, right now it's at 175 P hex for a Pulse X, um, which is down from a high of five, 600 PLS X for a Pulse, uh, for, a, for a hex. And uh, that's a 70% decline. So I think right now, just looking at the way the ratios are set up, you know, one could be, could be led to believe that perhaps, you know, right now PHEX is undervalued. And if it if it stays down in here and uh, at these all at these lows, that you could expect that eventually it will find its way out and to make a rally, and that you'd want to be capturing PHEX value down here right now and not Pulse X because. You're, if you're buying Pulse X here and not PHEX, you're you're basically saying that you expect this chart to go down lower and lower and lower and lower against P, against Pulse X. Um, but here's zero right here. So. And yeah, do, do you mean EHEX in this case? Or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. This is EHEX. Um, yeah. Same same strategy though here. So Pulse X and uh, EHEX. But yes, yeah, but you could say the same thing for. Yeah, I know for, they look for the same. PX as well. Anyway, yeah. I don't want to get people confused all the other way. Oh, yeah. Thank you for uh, fixing that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just my uh, you know ability to help. <laughs> the question here, sir: Can we expect huge price explosions from this currency? Is the project valuable? Welcome, if you're new here. Oh, oh Ani Ruse <laughs> gave it away. Did he? But yeah, is there, like, a, is there a 60 like, second explanation of the price explosion or, or, or value from, from this project, sir? Yeah, Service. I mean, look at the history of Hex. It's it's it it goes through huge run ups and and markdowns. But uh, I mean, typically you can expect this thing to go on 500 percent tears pretty regularly. So I mean, if that's I don't know if that qualifies as a big explosion in price. I, I, for me, I think it does. It, I think a six X is pretty damn good, but uh, you know, there's a reason why some people talk about you know, f- from here to here it's minus ninety nine percent, and from the beginning price up here, which you can't see on this chart because there's two weeks of data that's not showing that was can't be recorded because it was on a centralized exchange called Bidex back in two thousand and nineteen, but if you could see that, you'd see the price crash all the way down minus ninety nine percent here as well. And so the theory I think here is just like, look, you're in a coin with a massive community and the best founder in crypto, historically amazing price performance, um, you know, coming off a 99% drawdown for the second time, the chances of this coin not making some sort of an attempt to go take out even halfway back to all time high would, would not make a lot of sense considering how loud people are about this coin. And just looking at the chain, you can see that there's obviously accumulation happening and uh, and this is for you could say the same thought process for Pulse, Pulse X, Hex, or P or E Hex because 
they're all going to move together because it's kind of more like looking at four pieces of the of one infinity gauntlet. I like that uh, analogy. So yeah, they're the, in terms of price explosions. Yeah, when you clear this level here on EHEX, for example, it should it should make a pretty sizable move. This is like a we call it a neckline, and so this is like the level everyone's watching. Once the price can get above that. Um, it, it it could rise quickly to like three to five cents, which is like a three to five hundred percent move. Um, and you could even overshoot that, you know, if it's like back in the early days of, of uh, from being down minus ninety nine percent. I mean, even if you just look kind of the similarities here, in the in the in the bars pattern, like there is some bit of a semblance of, you know, same type of action building up like a pressure cooker and then exploding out the top. So, yeah, I mean it's. The whole ecosystem is going to explode this cycle. There's so much value uh, on the Pulse chain that you just don't get from Ethereum. And it's all new, too. Great question, Ani Roos. Anyone else new here? Yes, we uh, we like price go up. We like the tech. And we like to draw beautiful patterns. And uh, look at those look at those green green and reds. We like to disseminate information here. Uh, I'll take one more real quick. Frank uh, Polanik, do you think EHEX, PX, PLS, or PLSX will decouple from each other once more new money comes in the market during the bull run. So yeah, the ratios are already decoupled from each other because that's why you get this massive leg down on hex pulse X. Uh, but so in terms of the ratios between each other, they're already exhibiting that quality. But in terms of against the dollar, I don't know that they will decouple too much they'll probably all kind of run up together but just with some of them taking the lead at different periods but they'll all go up and down together for sure okay. it's hard to imagine, you know in my head exactly how I, I see how they may decouple from each other but it's kind of hard to imagine how they could decouple from pulse directly you know there's so much the lp is reliant that way but i guess we're going to wait and see you know i mean we do have the correlation matrix so we can go look and see how correlated there right so. do we have the technology Shit. we can rebuild them better than new uh let's take a look at um which hex e hex p hex sure. okay so the bar on the left is showing you the, uh, well, is 21 days appropriate? Probably not. Well, what time frame do we want to look at? Since the bottom? Or do you want to look January at January 6th? Jan January 6th. Okay. We're taking it back. We're taking it back. It's now Pulse, pulse Day. Let's, let's not get this, let's not, not get kicked off of YouTube here. No, no, no. January 6th is Pulse Day when, when the whales <laughs> came online and started buying and stuff. We're taking it back, okay? What a coincidence. What a coincidence. Yeah. All right, all right. All right. I, think, I don't think this is updated. I think this only goes to January 21st. So we got, we're missing data. But I can go to Hexfire website and get... This is free, guys. If you go to Hexfire IO, you can catch this correlation matrix at the bottom. So uh, we'll just look at it out. We'll look at the Here's whole the, thing. Yeah, draw that filter out on the end. Boom. So... Ehex... E hex versus hex. Really, they're one to one correlated. Is that even? Oh, because I I gotta uh, I gotta bring this up. Uh, let's go May twenty second, right? I'll just go May nineteenth. E hex. So seventy eight. It's a point seven eight uh, pos positive correlation. So pretty pretty correlated, I would say. It's a strong correlation. They're going to move together. Pulse and Pulse X. Yeah, EHEX is pretty. It's even more correlated to uh, Pulse and Pulse X. That makes sense because people were leaving one hex to go to the other, so it would have made the correlation go down a little bit v v relative to like the Pulse correlation, for example. Whereas like there was less activity between swapping between like dumping hex for Pulse or Pulse for hex. Um, I wonder what the Pulse X one here. Yeah, man, Paul Six and Pulse are just tied by the hip, which makes sense. Um, yeah, so expect like 0.7 or better for the whole cycle, probably. I don't see them decorrelating too much from each other anyway. 
Ehex would be one to watch for maybe some sort of event where like an unpredictable amount of whale buying happens on the Ethereum chain. Um, imagine like the whole pulse chain was mooning and the Ehex was just lagging behind and then someone was like, I want a piece of the action or the vice versa. Ehex goes and moons and all the pulse chain's lagging and then people just start dumping all their Ehex value for the pulse chain stuff and we're virtually lending value from one chain to the other. Tell you what, when I see my, my pulse balance triple because my EHEX tripled in price and pulse stayed the same, there's definitely an urge to flip some of that into pulse, 30% mm -hmm. probably. And I think it would behoove everybody that if, if you get really outsized swings on, on some of the coins versus the others, I'd say a three X or more, it's probably good to try to neutralize that R and R back down that ratio a little bit. Dude, the EHEX has been one of the most controversial coins. I like how it's controversial from the outside and then from the inside for the past year or so, it's been so controversial. People picking sides for whatever reason they, they deem, uh, they, they like to do that. And now we got, um, he drawn V2 coming out and I keep hearing, you know, speculation otherwise about, oh, you know, there's going to be a cross chain interoperability between the Hedron and Icos and stuff coins. And I wonder if Alex is going to make something that makes uh, interoperability between Hex. If, if we don't have, you know, Hex V2 from the, from the Hex devs, is there a ecosystem project like yeah. Hedron able to, to do that? Yeah. Oh, of course he hasn't come out and given us his final product yet spec you know it's getting close we're hearing rumors that it's getting close right that there's uh, auditing going on and whatnot but in theory what he could do is he can you know because remember a lot of this is based on the hsis the hedron the icosa um basically creating a new a new protocol that people can opt into and maybe transfer their their assets over but would allow you maybe to use ex and hex to uh to bid on uh, auctions on any any side, you know, on any chain, whether it's been bridged in or not bridged in, maybe you know, new versions of the tokens. Um, so everything's on the table, and he he did talk about those types of things once in a while, you know, about the possibility that happened. So, and that would give us a use for EHEX beyond staking. Now, I personally would still keep staking EHEX, right? But it does give you more use for EHEX, you know. I think this is probably the most bullish calculator we have um because 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 if so if you guys go to hexfire.io and you click on this gold button here the hex mining calculator it's a pretty diverse set of attributes that you can change to get different payout models based on different estimated share rate changes over time so there's assumption some assumptions that are made on what activities would lead to such an outcome but it goes from left to right conservative mild more aggressive and then really aggressive staking behaviors that are price positive uh, i'm sorry roi po positive mm. uh, so it gets fun to look at these different like predicted payout schedules and uh seeing kind of like the difference like just for like a example a 15 year stake is paying uh 456 percent more hex by the maturity date so if you think that you can't beat, if you can't 5.5x your bag during the market cycle in terms of crypto, not dollars, in terms of crypto, if you can't 5.5x your crypto holdings this cycle, maybe this is an option for you because this is a conservative guaranteed 5.5x in a coin that after this cycle, people will look back and say, wow, hex crashed all the way to a quarter or 50 cents. I'm so mad. I hate my life. And everyone's going to be all upset about it because it came down from five or 10 bucks. And, uh, but if you locked in now at these rates, you're going to end up with a coin in the bottom of a bear or two where you're like the dollar value of that is just tremendous. And it is my belief that the dollar, the price floors of the bear markets to come compounded with that huge ROI is going to be enough to way outpace debasement of currency and the inflation rate here in the states so that's that's my bet i'm, I'm that's what i'm placing my bets on so 
I think like it's feels a lot better to stake free hacks a lot longer. So if I stake for a year and I get a million hacks, I, I would have no problem staking that free million hacks I got from a year's worth of rolling stakes and putting that out 15 years to, you know, so that I'm, ha I can 5.5 X that in crypto terms plus compounded against any price appreciation I might get over that period of time too. And what, ha you know, there's always the thing that you got to keep in mind is like, Oh, you get to year 11 and it's worth so tremendously. I'm, I'm a huge amount you could end it early and it's not like it's a big payday stake so the the penalties aren't going to murder you like that they're, they're going to hurt but you'd probably be, be giving up six or seven figures of crypto or of dollar value but you're also going to be making like hundreds or thousands of x returns on those stakes so there's so much optionality and game theory <laughs> built into the system it is pretty awesome i gotta wait wait to see that i can yeah i gotta wait till next year though mostly until uh well maybe the end of this year um, maybe by, maybe by November, we'll start to get a flavor of how many people are willing to exit because, um, the counter, the counter on that, right. On the, those people exiting, of course, is they, they're going to give up a lot of uh, reward and a lot of yield, but that's great for miners because that, that puts it, that puts so much into the hands of the OA. Um, otherwise, you know, I like staking hex a lot. I, for one, it, it removes the, uh, Opportunity I could cost myself. Play on words, opportunity cost. The opportunity I could cost myself by getting rid of it when it's liquid. And I get to earn yield on it as well. And you know, I've been talking about uh, last year, I was saying, hey, I've made more hex stakes in, in 2023 than I've, I've, I think I've ever made before. Uh, and of course, and I've talked about ladders and all different strategies for that too. Is there, you know, I'm not putting everything out 5555, five, 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 but I think ladders are, are super cool to see come to life because when the price does go up, you get to tangibly look at, Hey, I locked it at this price. I locked, I got all those t-shirts. I got all that hex for cheap. And then when the price goes up, you, it's like, it's not, it's more than a payday. It really feels much better than a regular payday. It feels like not only did you get a good payday, you, you, it's like you made a good choice. You get like the, 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 the mm -hmm. double uh, dopamine hit on it. So it's amazing. I talk about this a lot. I'm sure you know people in the situation. You might be in the situation yourself. Um, at some point, you get enough. You get enough um, daily rewards that it, it it's more than you might be willing to put into crypto on a daily basis. Um, but that doesn't happen like overnight, right? So this is what we kind of describe these guys like. Somebody I don't know. There's one of the one of the miners that ended the other day. I don't know. He paid uh, six thousand dollars, maybe. I'm assuming based on the price of the day um, for the for the miner, and it was worth four hundred thousand dollars when it came out, right? And so um, now, on the one hand, that guy's good, good job, bravo, right? Got a, got got great value, going to do whatever he's going to do to support the system, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, but he can't get back in and get that again. That's it, done deal. Now he's in the trenches with the rest of us. If if he wants to make his number X any further. Uh, or or X as much as me. He's got to he's got to compete with me for uh, t shirts. Compete with you, you know. So the system's really cool in that way. You know that people really can earn. They exit out of the system, and then the rest of us, uh, you know, move move on. There's also this really interesting phenomena where you, you may start with pretty modest beginnings in hex. You know, you might be staking like a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars, and making all this really big plans for how you're going to set up a uh, three stakes on a ladder and you're going to divide up this thousand dollars into, you know, little chunks and spread them out. And then you put them away and you're like, in like the one of them that ends like in two years, it comes time for it to be due. And you look back and you're like, well, look, I didn't have that crypto that whole time. And in that, and since then I've been, I've actually worked harder and got more crypto than I ever thought I could have gotten. And now I wish I would have staked longer. And yeah. so it, it actually, there's this weird thing that happens where you're like, you, you basically write off your hacks as something that you'll never need to sell to sell. And it's just literally there for you as like a safety net that you can continually push out. Um, and you always find yourself, if you, if you go experience this for yourself, you, it's often where you'll find, you'll come to the point where you end the stake and you're like, well, I don't really want to sell this. I had to work. I had to wait all this time for this to mature. And, uh, the value in there is grown, but I've also grown my, my daily bags too. So I don't have a need for it right now. Dude, I, I've been wanting for so long to have some hex cartoons and stuff. Like there's so many, 
so many cool things that happen in the ecosystem and just you know fundamentally on hex it's like when you said that it made me think of get this little it's kind of like clippy if you guys remember like microsoft word clippy clippy mm -hmm. deal that was really annoying uh thing that uh would try to help you out it's like clippy but it's uh it's hex it's like a hex icon it's like hey buddy don't worry they're having a bad day don't worry still got these t-shares and it just like reminds you of how cool things are right now man what we need some more i don't know somebody point me to some cartoon artists and uh in the community. I'd love to, I'd love to see some more of that stuff. Also, never thought I'd say this, but we need to take a quick, uh, quick break real quick. Breaking news that happened today. We're gonna talk about Solana for like five minutes. Um, and uh, just the amazing, uh, amazing news of it went down for like the 11th time. I don't know if you guys heard about that. Solana, it, don't you wanna? It, <laughs> don't you wanna real DeFi. And uh, yeah, I just want to put on a tweet here, fix it, go to full.com, use real DeFi if you're having trouble with Solana. And then uh, even uh, Sir Richard Hart, a uh, pretty, pretty cool guy in the community, he was talking about uh, how Pulse Chain is better than Solana and uh, the flawlessness of, uh, of Pulse Chain. And I started making some of these infographics a while back too. Oh my gosh, I miss this one. I like this. I haven't seen it. Shout out to Hex. I think that, he's in the chat too. Who was that guy that posted? This Richard guy? Oh yeah, yeah, the Richard Hart. He's a he's a genius genius billionaire founder guy. He's he's pretty cool. He's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, and the gold. Yeah, the memes on this are pretty good. We got a lot of good memes today. A lot of pulse chain stuff, and I've been saving up for it. Like I said, I've been making infographics and some. Uh, you know, they're not they're not super objective. They are uh, they're definitely um, uh, geared toward their community and stuff too. But but still accurate. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Pulse chain less than a penny. Launched twenty twenty three community led. Solana, more than 100 bucks launched in 2022, backed by VCs. You got performance stats, you got the downtime stats, you got the technology, all that. So I've been making different ones with Hex and Bitcoin and uh, PulseX versus Sushi Swap and Pulse Chain versus Caspa and, and different stuff like that. Just when we have these moments, these opportune moments to uh, show people the power of using real DeFi. Any, any thoughts or commentary on why Pulse Chain is? better than Solana or, or the other way, feel free to take the other side as well, John. I think my angle on this specific conversation piece is I came from Bitcoin mining and Ethereum mining, which to me was sound money and blue chip coins. I thought that was where the value was and the stability was in the best in breed cryptos and to be first to the inflation. And, uh, when I find out a blockchain that's going down, it doesn't make me feel like that's sound money. So uh, I actually looked specifically for, um, in or what I, I should say, what I saw in Hex, particularly in by extension Pulse Chain, being a fork of an already rock solid piece of code called Ethereum 2.0, um, was that same sound money principles. And so that's kind of what I'm after for is 100% uptime in something because, you know, who wants to put their money in a thing that is more of like a gimmick that is arbitrarily on and off. That's when the most money's lost in this game is from stuff going on. You need to have hundred percent uptime and, and, and consistency and accuracy. And when it comes to, to things like that, cause you know, God forbid you had an emergency and you needed to get funds off Solana and you're, you're trapped out of your own money. Like that's just not even acceptable. Being trapped, not cool, not DeFi, in, in my humble opinion there. You know. uh, what do you want to, let's see, we got what, 10, 10 minutes or so left. You guys got another uh, chart or uh, explosion you want to you cover before we wrap up? Well, that the Axis chart exploded in the last uh, 12 hours. Maybe we can show people that. It's fun to watch green candles print. Go for it. Um, here is the axis chart on the regular linear chart, and it's just up for a casual 45% today. Um, I, How I many percent? Know. It says 44.8% in 45 hours. percent Man. Not bad, not bad. Pretty good for a coin that's at price so high. That's, a, that's an interesting uh, question, too, is can you tell... Uh, the the people coming into to access the stuff are they is it do you see new money do you see people from from hex like hex wells and stuff too um, there is any, like, 
there is adoption that comes in. You can see here the holder count on the left set, like 417. Um, that fluctuates a lot, and it's it usually fluctuates with the trend. So it, when, when we're getting like sell-offs, like back in this period, you lose holders, and then in, in uptrends, you start to gain new holders. Because from a, looking at an asset from the outside in, there's specific technical indicators that somebody's going to want to see before they're willing to take a stab at something for in terms of like a short to midterm opportunity. And I think like all it takes a lot of times with something we've learned in, in this process is people will follow if you show them the right signals. And you and that's what you got from Richard, uh, you know, announcing I'm going to fight the SEC. And then, the, the you know, some money moved around and then that was the signal and then everyone else followed in. So but to, to directly answer your question, this is probably this coin probably has more whales per capita than any other coin that I know of. Like the almost half of all of the holders are whales in this one. Like in terms of uh or not that's not okay, so no, what I meant to say was that there's more percentage of capital in the whales positions than there is in any but other category. Um and I I don't know what was the number, Crispy, it was like fifteen, I think. 15 or 16 whales and then like a ton of sharks we actually thought mm -hmm. about at one point changing the metric a little bit so that it didn't look so skewed in favor of sharks and whales yeah but, but when you say that when you're talking about the holders not that they're not that necessarily that they're sharks or whales outside of axis right i mean they probably are or could be but um broke <laughs> api broke yeah, these APIs are killing us, man. Yeah, if, if we got any devs out there, we need new APIs. <laughs> maybe Axis one's... Wells can afford to pay the devs, maybe. Perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> this one's called, yeah. the, those feeds come off of the Pulse Chain. Um, so the uh, the guys did a great job on a lot of stuff, right? Obviously, uh, the devs and stuff, just shout out to them. PulseX works great, the APIs there, but you try to go get um, API data from Pulse Chain, it's very hard. It's hard. free, but it doesn't always work. That is a tall green candle right there. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, any any other, as far as, heck, is there anything we didn't cover Do you think is really bullish for either eHex or PHEX or what we should be looking out for the next week or two? I feel like, some, didn't, some, didn't Silver say that uh, February 14th should be interesting? Do you guys know anything about that? Some big sticks coming out around then. That the Valentine's Day, me and Christy did the Valentine's Godwell stream about a year or so ago. Remember that? Yeah, it's been a while ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah we have that. We have that anniversary every year for a while. So Valentine's Day, we should go to thirty-three thousand, um, over thirty-three thousand hex for t-shirts. That's going on. There's some. There's a lot of hex coming out. Uh, might be some other confluence that Silver's talking about. Yeah, I think that. Like this year's a little different than last Q1. Last Q1, we saw pretty much up only for Hex for the first three months of the year. Um, but that was because there was hype around Testnet V3. And uh, this is more cycle driven, this move. So that's what, that's what I was going to ask. What, what, is the, what is the driver now? What is the hype now? Or what, what do we have to lean on for price performance? Oh, I mean, there's plenty of narratives that can get dropped at any point, which is what. So, but the substrate of the whole move is like, all right, Richard's back. This stuff's going a lot higher. That's like the basis for everything. And, uh, but in the midterm, you know, ETH and BTC kind of dragging their feet a little bit. And, and, uh, so, you know, we kind of need everything to move together. Not, not that we're like Paul's chain will move on its own anyway, I think. But, uh, this is a good sideways period here for Bitcoin. Um, I actually thought maybe we would have hit 38,000 another time already, but we haven't yet. And once this range breaks out one way or the other, I, su I suppose, you know, within 30 days ish, we should be seeing, um, a movement on everything. I think to the upside, I was hoping that we'd get a crash already a little bit lower on BTC to go test like that. The base structure down here of these highs around 32,000. Um, and somewhere between 32 and 34, you know, some say 35, some say 38. If you were going to stair step down 38, 35, 32, but yeah, I, I, you, I think if you don't test that level now, you're going to test it later in the cycle. So 
ETH and BTC are both looking bullish, looking mighty bullish. And all that billions and billions and billions of dollars has been liquidated from GBTC and others, and still the price holds up. So the transfer of wealth is occurring. The liquidity is there at these levels. Um, you know, 30 days, or, you know, any downside's a dip to buy. So within the next 30 to 45 days, I'd say it's things are going to start moving really quick. Q2 is going to be a big, a big period of time for, for crypto. I got a, I got a good question you done actually. So something I was thinking about today, I go on these runs and I just have these thoughts of uh, things I forgot about or things I think are interesting to, to bring up and discuss. But so Richard's pretty adamant, of course, so that's what it ended up being was we kept Uniswap V2 uh, for pancake swap V2, however you want to look at it for Pulse X. And I think it's, I mean, a lot of speculation is around. It's easier to push price around and, and stuff like that. So, you know, uh, Uniswap V3, all that stuff was out. We could have totally, totally did that, but kept V2. Now he's back. I feel like every vintage stream clip I see of him where he talks about, you know, uh, the price and how these things can move around otherwise, it just makes me feel super bullish. Do you think if there was a game plan, if there was this, uh, yeah, this uh, benevolent well and ecosystem or multiple, I guess in their case, where the liquidity could f fall in place to make, uh, you know, the God run of all times uh, this, the, in this cycle. Do you think we're well positioned with the, the tools we have, or the products we have, where the liquidity is placed? It was kind of like a multi-part kind of question. Where you added, added some more in there. Hey, listen, I'll, I'll say this. I think without any overt action, maybe specifically from the OA, we're we're in really good shape. Really good shape. Um, I think for this system to take off. Uh, of course, time frame on that would be probably quite a lot, a lot longer unless big players come in. Big players come in, start doing doing their thing. It doesn't appear to be um, take much, right? I mean, look what happened in this last round. And, uh, you know, and, and here's the thing is we're all playing in now, all of us, we're playing in a walled garden. If you hadn't been here before, you didn't get in, then you're out you're on the outside looking in. You got to come in and buy the bags, right? Which only drives it up higher, you know, in, in overall value of what's happening. So I think that any case that I'm thinking about, things are going to get much better. Now, as far as whether all the tools are up to snuff, they're all improving all the time. There's new ones coming online. It's part of building out the infrastructure i think and then and then ultimately i think the other thing we look at you know again number bias is a thing i i forget what the total was on the bridge but we look at the amount that came over on the bridge and we're like oh that's a lot of money that ain't a lot of money you know uh, it's not because there's just so much more out there that's floating around that can get diverted over and uh you know maybe into eth and then eth over to pulse chain or however it goes but Uh, I, I, th I think in terms of liquidity on the chain currently, the setup, how things are set up, it, it's all, it, it looks good. Like there's no necessary requirement for any authoritative figure to change anything at this point. Um, but any, any whale movement that's po positive is going to magnify the outcome, I guess is the way to look at it. Um, I don't know if there was like a specific concept or pool that you had in mind that you've been looking at or no just in general i think that the, the fact that he, he stuck with v2 as maybe being something that he he saw uh was uh, easier to move prices around for wells and stuff before and it worked super well for hex i got maybe i that. see where you're going yeah yeah so like yeah. the uniswap v2 is pump proven technology like we know that the technology that uh, that PulseX operates on top of that that architecture provides the best price appreciation. It's not the best for the market maker because the market maker ends up losing a lot of one side of the pair to impermanent loss, but it does create a nice and stable system so that price moves cleanly in either direction. And there's not any like hard edges where there may be an absence of liquidity on say a V3 histogram. 
because uh, you could run into a situation where nobody in the market thinks that a thing should be worth that price, and so nobody provides liquidity at that area. And so when the market then the market switches trends, the market is left with nothing to act on because there's nothing there, and it creates inefficiencies in the market, and it forces um, the market make it puts extra pressure on the market maker to uh, move, to dynamically shift and uh, actively manage their positions. Um, whereas like the automated market maker on V2 or PulseX is always working to, to, to create stability in the ratios between two coins. Um, and so that's what makes it price positive is there's always going to be support on one side and support on the other side. So there's equal amounts of both coins at all times. Whereas on V3, you don't get that. So you get inefficiencies, which causes, uh, not such a clean experience for anyone, really. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the, all these choices were deliberate. You know, I'm, I'm happy that we're we got PulseX, and I'm happy that there's like a smaller community that's got V3 to use as a tool for, you know, leveraging to get even more returns or to market make in your own unique way on an exotic pair, for example. A lot of opportunity over there for you to dominate an entire pool on a coin you like, with a with a specific range. So if you want to take advantage of that, you should. Um, most people just don't know where to start with the V3 stuff. But uh, if you have questions, just ask. Yeah, there's uh, plenty of people out here trying to educate on the stuff. Awesome. Gentlemen, another uh, fantastic stream, chock full of gems. If you just got here, hashtag replay gang. You're going to want to rewind for this one. Um, yeah, I think, that's, uh, I think that's the value we can provide today. Axis, uh, we'll start with you. Where can people find out more about you and your inquisitive framework? Yeah, come uh, come check me out on Twitter at Axis Alive or on YouTube at Axis Alive. And uh, if you want to know more about me or from me personally, you can sign up for uh, you can go book a call on the website uh, at AxisAlive.com slash services or join the boardroom today. Uh, it's a pretty cool group of about uh, 60 some odd people that all get in there every day and we're all trying to grow and be better, smarter participants in the ecosystem. Stronger, faster, better. Makes me think of the Kanye song. Greener. Uh, Chris, man, how's, how's it going? All right, guys. Well, hey, thanks. Thanks again, man. Appreciate it, Max. Uh, yeah, I saw you out in the streams, loving this whole uh, passive income, moving the system together and, you know, seeing where it all goes. Um, Hexfire IO out on uh, out on Twitter. Hexfire IO here in uh, YouTube land. Then the uh, the website hexfire.io. Uh, new website coming. Maybe maybe we're about a month out. Maybe a little sooner than that. That will be two launching. more weeks. Two more weeks. Two more weeks. Bring it back. Be, Bring back two more weeks. <laughs> so I'll, I'll I'll be launching that, and that's going to include uh, the public information. Uh, but I'm finally going to bite the bullet and offer up um, more advanced um, access to data and whatnot. And so uh, I'll, I'll fill you guys all in on that once I develop it out. i got to figure out the right costs and whatnot for the things. Because unfortunately, with um, anything having to do with hosting servers, there's a cost. So, so anyways, Absolutely. we'll be coming back with more. Everyone, uh, thanks for joining us. Again, uh, yeah, check these gentlemen out in their respective sites and brands if you're interested. And, uh, you know, you know where you're at in the channel. I have uh, got GoRealDeFi.com up in the chat before. That's uh, my place that I've been contributing to the ecosystem as well. And RHMax.TV, which is just a, uh, a link to go to the channel, but ask you if you want to sub. So fun little technology things I've been working on recently as well. But that's all we got for you today. Sci-Vibe and 5555. Five, five, five. We are out. All right, see you guys.